last years in Davos, the Eurozone and its problems have, cre have been a subject of much conversation and not always in the best way. Now, this year, things are different. The Eurozone is not the focus of everybody's attention. And um, I'm here to discuss that with Jose Manuel uh, Barroso, who's the president of the European Commission. So, is the crisis over? And if it isn't, what needs to happen <laughs> to make sure it is? First of all, I'm very happy that uh, now we are, we are no longer the focus of attention. But to be honest, we cannot say the crisis is over because the unemployment is still very high and our recovery, while there is a recovery, is still very modest. But uh, we are now turning a corner on the crisis. And I believe if you want to make it sustainable, this recovery, we need to continue our reforms that have been producing so good results, namely in some of the most affected countries. And also uh, we need to complete the banking union, adopting the single resolution mechanism. So those, so those are the priorities. Um, uh, you've just come. This is a, you've just come from a meeting um, with the Ukrainian president, um, uh, Mr. Yanukovych. Um, can you? Um, and there have been some difficulties in the relationship with the European no. Union. What, what's the outcome of your meeting with him today? No, I just uh, had a phone call with him, mm -hmm. uh, where I express uh, our very strong concerns. Uh, regarding the situation in Ukraine, namely the uh, victims of uh, violence by the police. I reiterated to him the need to engage in a serious dialogue with the opposition. I made it clear that uh, if this situation is not uh, uh, corrected, uh, the deteriorating situation of human rights and freedoms in Ukraine, there may be uh, consequences in the relationship with the European Union. And uh, um, I've asked him to receive uh, Commissioner Fuller and uh, High Representative Ashton in the next days. Uh, he promised me to do so. Uh, answering a question of mine, he also confirmed that there is no intention to decree a, a state of emergency in the country. So I think it was a very direct, frank uh, conversation. And I hope that uh, now uh, President Yanukovych, as he promised me, will indeed engage in a true dialogue with the opposition. What, what you mentioned cons possible consequences. What sort of consequences might they be? No, I have mentioned possible consequences because, of course, we have a partnership with Ukraine on the basis of uh, common values. And if there is no respect for those values, we have to review uh, the type of uh, relationship we want to have with Ukraine. Uh, but at this stage, I don't want to speculate about those consequences. Um, but of course, it will be consequences that will be detrimental, I think, to the interests of Ukraine. OK, back to, back to Europe. Uh, European elections uh, coming up in May for the European Parliament. I could see significant changes. There are a number of rejectionist parties. Or the European rejectionist parties are, are doing very well, it seems, in the mm -hmm. opinion polls. What do you see? Are you worried about the outcome of the, of the European elections? And what do you see as the, uh, as the consequence? Well, of course, I'm concerned because we don't like parties that have so uh, not only anti-European policies, but sometimes indeed anti-European values, for instance, of tolerance, of pluralism. There are even some xenophobic forces. So we don't like that. But uh, I think we have to put things in perspective. I don't believe they will get a result that will, for instance, block legislation in the European Parliament. So uh, my appeal to the mainstream parties, those that remain uh, committed to the European project, is to, for them to leave the comfort zone and to speak up for Europe. Because very often people put the blame on Europe of it is not really the blame on Europe, like the financial crisis that did not start in Europe and it was not the result of the European action. Uh, but on the contrary, the European Union has been part of the solution and not the cause of the problem. This week there's been a number of uh, comments in the uh, conversations we've had this week from European companies talking about the difficulties they have in competitiveness because of high energy prices in, in Europe. Now, there's been an energy package that, that your commission has announced uh, this week. Is there anything you can say to companies that would, would could um, uh, you know, assuage their concerns? They are completely right that uh, the prices of energy are very high in Europe, much more than in our competitors. First, because we don't have most of us, let's say, um, indigenous sources of energy. Uh, secondly, also because we don't have yet completed our internal market. We don't have enough interconnections. So, in fact, uh, the, there is not the true competition that should bring prices down. 
So I think their concerns are being addressed because one of the points we have put now in our uh, climate and energy package is about completing this internal market, is about going on with at least 10% of uh, the interconnections all over Europe and uh, uh, also uh, when keeping very ambitious targets in terms of climate because we have now presented a very ambitious target, it's 40% to 2430. So from our current target of 20% of reductions of greenhouse gases in 2020, we'll go to 40. So we'll double just in 10 years in 2030. This is very ambitious, but that we need to do to save our planet. At the same time, we said that we are going to keep flexibility in the member states, so to avoid any kind of distortion of the market that could be um, um, an additional cost and competitiveness and very importantly for the energy intensive industries we have some clauses so-called carbon leakage clauses mm -hmm. either free allowances or uh, exemptions of some of these uh, rules that can we believe keep their competitiveness uh, position okay one more question uh, and this is probably your last year as uh, uh, president of the European Commission one thing that your, your main priority now, the one thing you most would like to see done before your uh, term comes to an end? Uh, I have to say two. The banking union to complete it because the legislation was approved by the council, by the governments, but not yet by the parliament. So to complete the banking union that I've been pushing for. Uh, and secondly, of course, an agreement on the uh, general agreement on the lines of this historic climate and package, uh, climate and energy package that we presented just yesterday. Well, thank you for joining me today.